Good evening, everyone. My name is Janelle Riley. I'm the editor at Variety, and I'm so thrilled to welcome you here for the first screening of Fences. Well, um, I'm afraid we're out of time, so thank you for coming. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys so much for being here, and, and thank you for a beautiful film. You're welcome. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> this is uh, a, a, a group of a lot of people, but mainly SAG actors, I believe, so I always like to start by asking, how did you get your SAG card? <laughs> you have They, they still have must join or something like that, or oh, that was equity? They, you get your free, the first one's free or something like that? Yes. Right. <laughs> Your first job is free, you yep. get waived. Yep. So whatever my second job was. What was that, would it have been? I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Wilma was first, the Wilma Rudolph story, where I met my wife. Oh, wow. And uh, second one was, uh, I forgot. So your first job, you got a wife and a SAG card? No, I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. In that order. <laughs> Viola? I played the nurse, and that actually was my name, Nurse, in Substance of Fire with Sarah Jessica Parker oh. and Timothy Hutton. Oh. Yep. Did Nurse have a last name or just Nurse? No, just Nurse. <laughs> Jovan? Uh, I got my first job uh, last year playing Michael Murphy in the uh, HBO show called The Leftovers. Yes, you're fantastic. <laughs> I got my uh, card out of Chicago, shooting in Nashville. Yeah. Uh, a movie called Marie, uh, with Sissy Spacek and Morgan Freeman. And we shot it in Nashville, and uh, that, was, that was nice. Wow. <laughs> uh, I got my SAG card in 1999, uh, an episode of Law & Order. Oh. Wait, were you the killer? I was the guy who stole the bike. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, I had a very similar job. Back in 1970, I uh, was stealing televisions on Starsky and Hutch, and that's how I got my job. Yeah. And, uh, Joel Thurm casted me, so I'll never forget him. He changed my life. Well, I got my sad car fences. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I want to start at the beginning with Fences. I know this play premiered in 1983 uh, to universal raves, went on to have a highly acclaimed 1987 Broadway production, won the Tony, the Pulitzer, and many of you, many of you with the exception of Jovan and Sanaya, starred in the 2010 Broadway revival, which won Tonys for Denzel and Viola. At what point did you start looking at it as a film? Uh, seven years ago, Scott Rudin sent me the screenplay. That was written by August Wilson, his original screenplay. Uh, I read it, and I realized I hadn't read the play. I read the play, and I thought Troy Maxson was older than me, because I had seen James Earl Jones and Courtney Vance and, and, and everybody else. And it said Troy Maxson 53, and I was 55. So I said, wait, I better hurry up. <laughs> so I uh, called Scott Rudin back and said, I want to do the play. He said, you want to do the play? I said, yeah, I want to do the play. He said, let me raise the money. He called me back a week later, whatever it was. And uh, that's, how, that's how it started. And what attracted to you to your roles initially? I mean, aside from the opportunity to do Broadway with Denzel Washington and Viola Davis. But, I mean, for you guys even, what attracted you to the role of Troy? <laughs> the role of Troy. <laughs> I mean, it was a great, it's a, it's a you know, August Wilson wrote a masterpiece. It's, it's, it's a masterpiece. It is a masterpiece. And... Uh, this is one of the great plays of all time, you know, Tennessee Williams, Arthur Miller, Eugene O'Neill, Edward Albee, August Wilson, and Neil Simon. Too. But I mean, that's just, that's just what it is. It's the gift that keeps on giving. And uh, as we found out, and, and, and I found out that, uh, and you found out, it, 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 it works as a film as well, because we can now get here and we get to see how people feel, how Rose feels when Troy leaves, mm -hmm. you know, things that you, you don't get in the play, you know, they have a scene and then curtain, I mean, black out yeah. in the next scene, so. And Viola, Denzel has directed you before in Antoine Fisher to an Independent Spirit Award nomination, by the way. Um, so the opportunity to act opposite him and be directed by him, 
I mean, I was going to say it must have been overwhelming, but you're Viola Davis. You probably don't get overwhelmed. <laughs> I get overwhelmed all the time. But um, Denzel makes it easy. I, I keep saying this. The two things he said to us before we started was, remember the love. Mm -hmm. And the next thing he said, which is a frightening statement for actors, is trust me. And we did, yeah. you know. Um, Denzel knows I'm a friend and a fan of him. I think that, I think he's an extraordinary man. He's a man of God, he's a man of great integrity. And I think that what happens is it shows in his work, you always, always wanna be completely honest with what you're doing. And he's, he's got an honest gauge mm -hmm. on him. He knows when, he's got a bullshit meter. <laughs> And a lot of people have a bullshit meter, but they don't know. Don't listen, Sonia. Cover your ears back down. <laughs> no. but, but a lot of people don't know what to say to actors to unlock it. Mm. To unlock whatever is in you and, and get it out. They a, a lot of times know what to do to keep it in there and make you afraid to bring it out. But not Denzel. Once again, you can trust him. Yeah. <laughs> He's a great leader. And Jovan, I guess it's good that they waited a few years to make this movie so that you were the right age. Uh, so it must have come through um, as a film casting call. Absolutely. Uh, I remember the entire process, the day that I actually found out I was going to audition with Denzel. It was, I mean, it was, the whole thing was like a movie. It was raining that day and it was like a big storm and I was outside of the office at Paramount and I was freaking out because I heard his voice on the other side of the, of the casting room. And I was like, man, this is the first time I heard his voice outside of, you know, movies. So I started to have like a little panic attack in the hallway and I was like, I gotta, I gotta step outside. And the casting lady was like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, yeah, just maybe some water or something, but you know, I'll be okay. <laughs> and just that entire audition was without a doubt one of the most challenging, but the most rewarding, mm -hmm. I think in any audition that you go or any job that you're going for, there's always an opportunity that you're not gonna get the job. And I went in understanding and feeling good about the fact that just getting the opportunity to read and to play with one of my heroes was just a treat and it's a blessing that nobody will ever be able to take away from me, so. And then. And what did you do when you got the call that you got the job? I cried. <laughs> I cried, I mean, you know, my dad, and my mom and dad had knew that I was reading for it and, they would get, you know, you're going to get it. You know, I know it's for you. You know, it's for you. It's for you. And I was like, you guys wait. There's a lot that goes into who gets a job and who doesn't. And when I got the call, I was outside uh, on my way to another audition. And I got the phone call. And they were like, you know, Denzel said you're the guy. And I just, I stopped in the middle of the street and I started crying. It's, you know, it's the role, the role that you wait for. And yeah. I was fortunate enough to get it early on. So, again, it's a blessing. It's great. And uh, our national treasure, Stephen McKinley Henderson. <laughs> how did the uh, role come to you? Uh, how did it come? Yeah, in the play originally. Uh, I came in and auditioned. Really? And, and actually, you know, all these people there that I had known, I mean, you know, that I'd worked with, you know, except Denzel, and they looked at me like they didn't know who I was. <laughs> <laughs> they really, that is just true. And, uh, and Denzel looked over and saw him. He looked at them and he said, well, you know, y'all know who he is, right? And, uh, and they sort of looked like, is it okay to say that it's okay, that I know who that is? <laughs> you know, I mean, it was, it was, I don't know, but Denzel was so open. He got up, he said, well, yeah, you, you're a Wilson actor, brother. That's right. And um, I said, oh man, you the one. And he said, if I'm the one, you the two. <laughs> That's what he said. That's what I said. That's what you said. And, so, uh, and, uh, and I, you know, it, but it was very, just like what you just said, it was very difficult to start to do the audition after he said all that, you know what I mean? But, but it was a reader, and that's what I remember. It's the young brother who was a reader, and he said, it's a pleasure to work with you. And it just took me all the way back to where you're supposed to be, which is he and I just gonna work together for the first time today. 
we just gonna work on this scene and then we gonna, and that's it, you know. And uh, between that and Michael T singing a song for my father out in the hallway, it was just a lot of good vibe on it, you know what I mean? It just felt, felt good, so. And, and you knew August Wilson. You've been in how many of his plays? Well, I mean, with him I did three, but I've, I've been in eight of the, of the ten. Wow. <laughs> Russell? Uh, what is the question? <laughs> <laughs> how the role initially came to you and what, and what attracted you to it? Well, I mean, <clears throat> obviously, to work, um, to work with both August on the, and Denzel, you know, it's an, it's an honor, you know. Um, it's an honor to have been selected by D for him to say, I believe in you, I trust in you and your work to come and play with us, to come and play with me. And, um, and then <clears throat> also just to, to be able to, to continue to say August's words. You know, I have to just echo Viola's sentiment and what really penetrated me was Denzel saying, don't forget the love. I mean, that's coming to work every day and just keeping that in the back of my mind and in my spirit and in my heart, the love, the love. And, you know, there's a moment, and you talk about trust, when uh, in the last scene, you know, he just kind of came over and, and said, brother, you, you know, uh, don't work so hard, <laughs> you know, a couple times. And it was great to hear that. You know what I mean? And for him to trust in me to say, I know you have it, and let's, what we're gonna do is, I'll never forget, he said, we're gonna go to lunch, we're gonna come back, and, we gonna, and we, you're gonna hit it. Wow. And just, remember, just don't work so hard. And that really honored me for him believing in me to say, I, you, you got it in you, don't even worry about it. Mm -hmm. you know? So I really appreciated that, and thank you. I like your voice. Why don't you ask that question one more time? My parents are here. This is like, That's all right. My wife is here. She got. She gonna. She gonna hold me down. We're good. Yeah. No, I, I'm so happy for Michael T. I know. Yeah. You know. Me too. I'm happy for everybody, but yeah. that, that, don't get started now. Go ahead, boy. Go ahead. You know what I'm saying. Go ahead. Y'all, I love you too, man. That's our code. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, uh, wow, I'm not going to be emotional. I'm an emotional guy, um, and I'm, I'm a no-nonsense guy. You'll find that out. But if you, you know, if, if, if you see I need a little work, just pray for me, man. It'll be all right. But um, uh, you mentioned the term national treasure. I think everyone up here is. Some are more elevated than others. I think that's obvious to who you are and who you think they are. Um, so I won't speak to that. But to be in their company, I feel extremely privileged. Um, Denzel's amazing. I could talk about him all day, every day for 15 years and give you something new and fresh because he's that guy. He's been my hero and peer for years. And he's also made me work harder because he's so inventive and creative that I see him do something and go, ah, he did that too? Oh man, now what am I gonna do? <laughs> so, but I, I, I appreciate that. But uh, real quick, right back to your question. The way I got involved with Fences is I heard that Denzel wanted to see me for this, and it was, a, it was an amazing director, Broadway director named Kenny Leon, who's a national treasure, who happens to be here. Oh, he's here. Kenny Leon, where you at, Kenny? Ken, Kenny Leon, where you at? Where are you, brother? Where he is. Come here, man, come down here. Come down here with us. Slide over, girl. Now, this is the real reason we're here today. August Wilson and Kenny Leon is the real reason. Yeah, share the mic with, with. 
All right, thank you, Kenny. Uh, while everybody's getting some Kenny love, uh, just sit back here with me, sweetheart. Um, but while everybody's getting some Kenny love, uh, Kenny brought me in. I actually thought it was the worst audition of my career. My <laughs> wife can tell you, I went home. I think it was on a Friday in West Hollywood. I went home and she said, how you doing? I'm, mm -hmm, I'm good. I got in the bed. I was in the bed all that day, all night, all of Saturday during the day. <laughs> I'm serious. And there was a party and I went, my agent was, she said, you gotta get out of the house, come to this party. I went and Gabrielle Kringle, who was my agent at the time, uh, who I miss dearly, uh, said, what's the matter? I said, God, I had the worst audition in my life. She said, what are you talking about, for what? I said, fences. She says, are you kidding, they love you. I said, get out of here. So Kenny tricked me, man. He didn't give me no love in the room. Denzel didn't give me no love in the room. D was just playing it cool. I was like, I felt like I let him down, but thank you, uh, and thank you all so much. And uh, thank you, Kenny, I appreciate you, man. What, what was the question? What was the question? Oh, I was, Sanaya, do you remember the audition for this? What was that like? Oh, yeah, I remember. Uh, <laughs> when I heard I got a call back, I was like, um, who is this with again? And it was Denzel Washington. <laughs> and I was like, oh, the Malcolm X guy. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, that's the only movie I can probably watch. <laughs> but, uh, uh, except for Man on Fire, I love that movie. But, um, <laughs> no! <laughs> Watch Man on Fire? Wait a yeah. second. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, to your perversion, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, um, you guys probably think my parents don't teach me right stuff. Um, okay. okay. So I remember when I got a call back and um, I recently auditioned out here. And when I heard I got the call back, I had to fly to Pittsburgh. And I remember that night in the hotel, I was just like, I was thinking to myself, okay, you gotta get yourself together. You're gonna meet Denzel Washington. Um, and I was just like, I was like, uh, I told my mom, okay, uh, <laughs> she's like, you high? And I was like, I'm cool, I'm cool. And then uh, that whole day I was just chill, but in my mind I was like, yeah, I'm gonna meet Denzel Washington. <laughs> but, then, when I went in the room, I felt this connection, like, when I, he just had a, he's always smiling. Like, the dude is always happy. <laughs> and I walked in, and I was just like, oh, he's smi hi. Uh, uh, and he's like, uh, 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 what's, your, what's your name? And I was like, um, I, I'm Sanaya, uh, I, I'm nine years old and stuff, and he asked, oh, what do you want to be when you're older? I said, I wanted to be a nurse, but of course I'm an actor, so I can, you know. Uh, <laughs> but then um, he was like, okay, you ready to start the scene? So when he did it, after he was like, okay, what do you like to do? And I was like, I like to sing and stuff. And he was like, okay, sing a song for me. And I was like, I sang a song and there was like a bad word in it. Of course, I don't say that stuff. But um, there was a bad word in it and I bleeped it out. And he was like, you don't say bad words, do you? And I was like, of course not. <laughs> and he was like, and he was like, oh, okay, good. So your parents don't teach you how to t say bad words, right? And I was like, my mom cusses like a sailor, but I'm... <laughs> I love you, mom. Uh, I love you. Let me, let me jump in before you get yourself in more trouble. <laughs> Take that mic from that girl. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me say this about Sanaya. Uh, let me say this about Sanaya, and this is, this is a true story during the audition. She sat, she read, and we talked, and she said, look, I'm serious about this. I really want to be an actor. And you know, these little kids out here, young kids, and they want to play and mess around. I don't have time for that. I'm serious about my work. I said, this is a little person. It has to be. I just felt like it, two, two young girls I met like that. And the other one was named Dakota Fanning. Where I just said, this is a grown person that just looks very small, like a child. But she was so serious about her work and uh, obviously she delivers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kenny Leon? Yes, because we have Kenny here, I'm dying to know, Kenny, was this your first time seeing the movie? Yeah. 
Oh, I hate to put you on the spot, but I mean, what did you Well, think? you know, I, I'm sort of emotional now because I talked to Denzel um, last week and he let me hear some of the music, which I love the score. And, um, and so I got a call from Angela Bassett. She said, I'm going to the screening. I said, no, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait to see it with Denzel and I'm going to see it Christmas Day. I'm going to buy a ticket and sit there and be an owner. And so I wasn't planning on this at all. And I'm sort of emotional now, but when that last shot, well, and it panned up to the sky, mm. and having had the, and all of us have worked with August, but having worked with August on his last couple of plays, and last few months spending time with him as we worked on the last play, I felt his spirit, and I said, and I looked up and I said, August, this is what he wanted. He wanted, and he wanted this group of people to deliver it to the world. And now millions of people get to see and hear August Wilson. Um, there, there's something that happens in the film in that last scene. Some of you may have noticed it or not. When, he, when, when Gabe puts the, the, the trumpet up in the air and says, Troy, the gate closed. And it did it by itself. No, that wasn't It closed planned. by itself. It closed by itself wow. on that moment. Yep. And I decided to use that take oh my because I said, well, August want to be here too. So he walked in, closed the gate. That, that, you saw it in the, in the yes. in, that actually happened at that moment. Gabe says, Troy, Troy. And the gate just went, I added, hmm, I added that one. <laughs> Because it wouldn't take your eye to it, but anyway. That is amazing. God is good. <laughs> That's, you know. All the time. I remember when you won the Golden Globe for the hurricane, that you said three words. What's that? You said, God is love. You went up there with Ruben, and it's one of the best speeches I've ever seen, so right. thank you for that. Um, since we have Kenny here, too, this is great, because we have so many questions about taking an acclaimed play. It doesn't always work when you translate it to film. Where did you even begin, and, and what were those conversations like about what to just, keep? Just to slowly, you know, if, if, if there's 25,000 words in the screenplay, 24,900 of them are August Wilson. I added the commissioner will see you now, and a couple, a couple of words here and there, but it, 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 we, it was a process, and slowly, trying to figure out where, where could something take place. I went back and forth a long time about putting that scene uh, with, with, with Rose at the sanitation yard. So I, wanted, I set it up by having me and Bono leave the sanitation yard so that the second time you see me leave, the, uh, my wife Rose is there. And I ask her, my daughter, Katya, are you here? I don't know if my daughter's here. Anyway, Katya, I asked different women, I said, well, in that scenario, in that situation, would you go inside that yard to confront your husband? And some women said, oh yeah, to let him know I'm getting a divorce. I said, well, that's 2016. I'm talking about 19, <laughs> I'm talking about 1957. Mm -hmm. And my daughter said, no, I wouldn't go inside because I wouldn't shame myself. Wow. So I decided to put her there, but then I said, no, I must walk to her since I changed it. Because every, you know, he wrote a masterpiece and I was very, not afraid, but you have to be careful. They use this word, opening a film, opening yeah. it up. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't trying to do that. I was saying, well, where else can this take place? It, obviously, like we are here, it's presentational, so you gotta be in the backyard. But we can be in the kitchen. We can be in the front room. We can be in the front of the house. We could, we could be upstairs. So it was a slow, really, year and a half process just deciding where we do August's work. Well, and I love the very first shot of the film. You're actually on the truck, and to get to see that, and you're literally in motion. Right. And, I mean, right there you opened it up. Right. Um, I actually have a question from the audience that applies to this. Um, I apologize in advance if I mispronounce anyone's name. I feel your pain. Um, Amira Lumley uh, wants to know if the actors can speak on the techniques or processes that you used in the play versus the ones used in the film. Were they different? Were they similar? Both, maybe? What's that one? <laughs> well, you know, uh, Viola says, uh, you know, you, 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 you got to start with the truth. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where it starts. You know, just to, you and the other person are really talking to each other. You know, the, 
four letter word for intercourse is talk, you know? <laughs> T-A-L-K. We really be engaged with each other. And um, uh, that, what, what, what I recall the most about this rehearsal process is Denzel, he got us who had done the show on the stage and then he took us and put us in a house and to start talking to each other. And uh, there was something so freeing about that and, and, and it that revealed and opened up what August had these people talking to each other about. Uh, and uh, I remember Michael T saying, it's much more intimate. Mm. You know, it was just an, an intimacy to, to talking to each other. And, uh, and then the, the fact that because it was 1957 and because um, there was no television, you know, and, and the radio would be on when you wanted to hear music, you didn't look for nothing else from there. And so the entertainment came from each other. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, and it was so entertaining, you know, it's wonderful to get to play the role I get to play because he's a, he's a listener and he gets to listen to some really wonderful stuff. So, uh, and that, that came from Kenny when we were doing the play. Kenny said, well, Troy is television. Troy's the TV on Friday. They all know it's going to be the same stories. We're going to come down here and he's he going to tell these same lies. And, you know, blah, 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 blah. Right, Johnny? Yeah, Troy lying. And, the, and, and he doesn't say, no, I'm not. They keep right on going because that's, that's the ritual. You know, one of the things I will have to say, though, is I, I'm one of those actors that believe conventions out there are put out there to be broken. And one of the conventions of film is that everything has got to be small. You know, as an actor, you do TV film and you're playing opposite an actor, you can't even hear a word they're saying. It is so tiny and small. And you know, and everyone says, oh, well, the camera's there to pick it up, but pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. And sometimes that works. But here's the thing, sometimes moments are big. You know, when my father took his last breath and that hospice nurse had that stethoscope on his chest and pulled my mom to him and said, Mrs. Davis, he's gone. And I was standing there. It wasn't a small reaction. When my boyfriend of seven years, when I found out he was cheating on me, that was like not a small reaction. <laughs> You know, and, and, and I find that it's in those moments when the stakes are that high, when there is no vanity, when you feel like you're fighting for your life and you're doing small, small, small. It's not small anymore. This is not, August doesn't write small. It's tragedies are high stakes and the reason why I'm saying all of that is because when I came into it, I said, okay, I'm gonna do everything small. I'm gonna be small, you know? And I did the scene with Denzel when he's like, I've been, you know, I, it's hard for me to say I've been standing in the same spot for 18 years. And I said, well, I've been standing with you. <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> in the rehearsal hall, and, and Denzel, he's very sweet, but he was looking at me like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> And I said, well, I'm just not, I'm trying not to be too big. He said, well, do what you think is too big. And so I was like, I've been standing with you. He was like, I don't think that's too big. <laughs> all, all actors out there, there's no such thing as film acting. Yeah. Forget whoever, no disrespect to the teachers. I've done it a little while. There's no such thing as film acting. The truth is the truth. For the person way back there in the back, this is the truth. For the person right up here in the front, this is the truth. So if the camera's this close, it's still the truth. The truth is the truth. There's all this, how oh, I have to bring, no you don't. You have to be honest. The camera will catch you lying. That's right, amen. Amen. May I? Uh, may I? Um, I'm so excited to be among so many actors. Not just these, but those. Um, I love you guys. It, I just want to say uh, thank you guys for all the hard work. It takes some of us longer than others to fulfill the call or the gift that's inside you. 
But if I may encourage you, just remember, never quit. A quitter, a winner never quits and a quitter never wins, right? But, but more importantly, for your craft, if I may share what has helped me, you always become what you think about. That's in life, that is within character. You always become what you think about. So borrow from the best and then pursue and believe in you and just get it on, man. Don't let anybody stop you. Let's ask Kenny Leon a question. Yeah. Actually, I'd, I'd love to ask Kenny, I don't know if you have an opinion on this, but I'd also like to ask the, direct, the actors. Um, we all know Denzel Washington is blah, 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 one of the greatest living actors ever. Um, <laughs> it seems almost unfair he's also a great director. <laughs> uh, what do you think makes him such a great director? Sanaya has I, I can, um, <laughs> watching the film, I, I was analyzing that. Because the play, it sits on the, on the porch. Everything takes place right there. Mm -hmm. And I was so impressed how, as a filmmaker, he opened it up from the street to the backyard. So there was a through line from the kids on the street to the folks on the, on the back, in the back. But everything happened in between that. So there was a flow there was a flow of life that allowed August's poetry to feel natural and organic. And I was really, really impressed with that. It's music. Yeah. August Wilson writes music. Yeah. You know, there, there was a process in, in, in working on the screenplay and some other things were written and then taken out. Beethoven can't write Chopin and Rachmaninoff can't write you know, Beethoven. So August Wilson is just a genius. And we're very, very fortunate to have lived at a time where he came along and, and, to, to, and, and wrote for us. It's the most natural thing for us. We don't get parts like this. I've been around a long time. I haven't had any part like this and, and, or, or a play like this. And uh, it's just a privilege and an honor to to speak his words. I mean, we, we, five of us, you know, did 114 shows and, and it was, it was, it was like it was tonight. I mean, there were standing ovations and things every night and it was, it was obviously a testament to all the actors, but to his, it's the gift that keeps on giving. You know, you know, you know actors know it could be the 50, 50th or 100th show and then you find something else. Like, Sha the only other playwright I, I, that happened to, well, Eugene O'Neill too, but Shakespeare, you, where you, oh, oh, that's what he meant. <laughs> Usually after you've closed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, does anyone else want to speak to Denzel as a director? Uh, Viola, you've worked with him as a director twice. Please go, please. Uh, thank I'm sorry. I'm not shy. Uh, <laughs> but no, but in all seriousness, Denzel, you know how we, you know how I feel about you. Uh, I spoke of you earlier today. Uh, different set of people, but just briefly, Actors command respect, even if they don't ask for it, even if they walk around with their head bowed and their shoulders haunched, they still desire respect. I've never been more understood, nor seen actors better treated than these actors by this amazing director. Um, whatever you do, please take note that you and I, we are all privileged to walk the earth at the same time as a modern day legacy. Our leader, my peer, my friend, Mr. Denzel. All right, I'm serious. All right. Give it up. I love him. He's Thank amazing. You. I got to say one thing. All right, all right, all right, all right. No, 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 no. Come on now. But just one thing. Only because um, my first August Wilson was Seven Guitars with Lloyd Richards, the great Lloyd Richards. Here. And, and, and what makes Denzel a great director is exactly what made Lloyd Richards a great director, which is he's a great teacher. He, he did it especially with Jovan, I will say. He did it with a lot of the young actors who were stand-ins or understudies. Is, and Jovan, you could 
probably stop me or not stop me is I, I felt that he w gave people like Javon, myself, something that we can use beyond the movie. Asking Javon about choices, connecting scenes, connecting the journey. One of the things that he helped me with was the last scene, never got it in the play, and that was on me. I just never got it. It never hit. Intellectually it did, but then I was like, I'm not getting this. And I remember Denzel saying, Viola, this is not a monologue. This is for him. Anything about Corey, else, talking about Corey. It's for Corey. And whatever else happens, let it happen. But it's not about you. That is what a teacher does in an acting class. Because what it unlocked too was it all of a sudden, it, it, it's something where you feel like when you leave this, this performance, when you leave this project, you're gonna be a better actor. You know, and Lloyd Richards would give you those gifts of wisdom every single day. But I think that's what makes um, Denzel really great. And he happens to really care. He's not abusive. There's a lot of abusive directors out there. They just want the shot. They could give a shit about you. Sorry, Sanaya. Uh. Um, <laughs> but yes. Uh, Giovanna, for, forgive me for not knowing, was this your first film? This was my first feature film, yes. Wow, so you and Sanaya. <laughs> and, and you and Russell, I feel like there's an extra layer of intimidation because you're playing Denzel Washington's son as well on, on screen, and for you, Viola Davis's son as well. <laughs> I mean, at, Russell, you did the play, so I'm hoping like you, you're, you were not as intimidated, but at what point do you get over that intimidation and just get to work? Well, I mean, <clears throat> you're up here with these players. You better come ready. You know what I mean? You can't, you have to, you know, you have to walk in ready to honor the work, ready to honor August, uh, ready to be a part of this band of merry actors, you know, and you have to be ready to do and give your level best. So, I mean, and, I mean, but again, having the environment to do that, right? Having a, a place where you could, there's a, there was a soft landing. And again, commending uh, Denzel for having that three-week rehearsal time, which was really important because we needed to re-investigate the material. You know, there were oftentimes he would say, he had to remind me and us, we're not doing the play. I mean, there were a couple times we went back to, we reverted back to our original blocking. When we oh, wow. were on set, we were like going back and did these, hey, hey. And he let us roll for three or four days. And then he said, <laughs> Hey, yo, this is the movie. The camera might just be like right here. You're like, where you standing, the camera might be there. So, you know, you can be anywhere. Let it all go. And just reminding us to let, let's start anew, start fresh, reinvestigate the material. And there's other gems in there. Just, just get, get in and investigate and excavate whatever else is in there. It's something else. Is Charlotta here? Yes. Sir. Where's Charlotta? Wow. Come on down here, Charlotta. <laughs> Cinematographer. Oh, wow. Charlotta. <laughs> Bruce. You're gonna go sit you're gonna Christian sin. Charlotta, I, 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 what made me think of Charlotta was because, uh, look, I'm starting to direct now, let me sit down. <laughs> was because I knew the actors wanted, you know, I kept working with, with, with Gabriel, with Michael, and he kept doing this because he's turning out. Yeah. So I started walking around with Charlotte. I said, come on, let's go over this side. Because they'll, they'll look the way I am if I'm with you because they know the camera's going to be over there. <laughs> so I would, you know, just, I never told you all that. But I started walking around different places so people would just, you know, turn around. Because it, it, it's, it's, you know, it's harder to break habits than it is to come in fresh. And we all were, you know, do, have, having done the play. Did you notice that, Charlotta, that everybody was starting to face out originally? Well, Denzel pointed it out, let's say that. <laughs> That's, can, do you mind if I ask? I hate to put you on the spot, but well, he brought you down here, so blame him. <laughs> um, uh, what was your relationship like working on this project? Um, you know, did, it sounds like it was like really, truly collaborative. It was 
truly amazing. It was, um, from the very beginning, it was all about understanding the, the truthfulness of it. And I think also all the things that we weren't going to do with the camera. There was, now Viola was talking about, you know, you can be big and you can, you can get it all out there. I think with the camera and the conversations I had with Denzel, it was very much about just being, let it happen. You know, and I think that was a decision, and there's a lot of decisions that is about not doing things and just actually observing and being in the right spot. And I think for a, for a play and a screenplay like this, um, there was really only that place for the camera. I felt like we found it. You know, it, it couldn't be different. It couldn't be up there. It was it was that one spot. So it was a very kind of precise. Um, um, way of telling the story. May I ask how many days did you shoot? Uh, I don't know, 38, 39? 40? 30, how many? <laughs> Molly? Molly here? Yeah. Executive producer Molly Allen. <laughs> how, how many days we shoot, Molly? How much money we, we, we spent too much money? We... <laughs> Molly's a magician. She, she fools everybody and steals money and hides it and then <laughs> tells me I have another day and Molly's we and I have been together, I don't know, 15, whatever years. How many? 18. 18 years. And stand up, Molly Allen, executive producer, Molly Allen. <laughs> Is Katya over there with you? Is Katya there with you? Oh. Um, I, have a, I just love this question. It's from, um, I think the names are Hilti and Story. Uh, you are all very accomplished and seasoned actors. Working with you would be a master class for any younger artist, but was there anything you learned from your younger co-stars, Sanaya and Jovan? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I thought so too. Uh, you know, maybe a, they'll come to me down the line. I didn't have time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a lot to do, but, but you know, because we did the play, it, 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 it was a little, not easier for me, but it, at least I thought I knew what I was doing. But uh, just honesty, you know, I, I remember in, in the audition with, with Jovan and I pushed him around. I really pushed the actors and there were a lot of attitudinal actors. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you mad about? Well, he's, uh, I'm like, are you going to walk around like that all the rest of your life? You know, relax. This is, you know, but Jovan was very relaxed and whatever I hit the ball over the net, he'd hit it right back and he just flowed. He just had a, he just had that, 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 that thing about him. Uh, you know, I've been fortunate to, to, to find three young men in, as a director, Derek Luke and Nate Parker and now Jovan, and, and uh, he's, he's well on his way. Anyone else? Uh, you know, yeah. it's the respect that they have for the work. Uh, it's not so much something I learned, it's just something I just so love to appreciate. You know, you see young people who really, really respect the work, respect the legacy of it, you know, and, and, uh, and, and that's amazing. And, and to be in Pittsburgh and appreciating, I remember Javon really appreciating that he was there. And uh, we went out to, to the Stone, you know, and uh, we went out to, to visit August Stone, and I, I knew where it was, and uh, but but we were walking together. You know, you, you kind of helped us find it. It was intuitive how you knew where that tree. I was looking for that tree, and I didn't know, mm -hmm. you know, and he saw the tree. I think it's that one, Steve. Yeah, he said, <laughs> yeah, that's the one. That's the one. And 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 it's it's just that 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 love for the legacy to see it in youth. That's just real. And you don't you can't. I can't express to you how what a good great job this young man did. He was up there with some veterans, some serious actors. It was some serious acting going on. And he had to catch up. We knew the language. We we had the success and all of that. And he starting fresh and you know, he's uh I think he'll be all right. He may have a career. <laughs> uh, I have a question from Nick Thurston. Um, what do you believe has prompted this resurgent of, resurgence of interest in August Wilson's work, and how does it feel to immortalize such a significant characters on film? And that's a good one for Stephen because yeah. people are always doing August mm -hmm. Wilson plays. It's not a resurgence. He ain't going nowhere. It feels more we, Folks than just ever. didn't know. <laughs> just because you didn't know doesn't mean it wasn't happening. 
You know, that play, this play, Fences is produced everywhere. Mm -hmm. I, I go online, you can see, I was going online looking for me in Fences and I found 200 other Fences. You know, everybody, this is a bad, well, you know, my Troy was a bit more stoic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, people come up to me with their Troys. Oh yes, I was more of the classic. <laughs> I mean, I like what you did, Denzel, but. It was, Kenny, Kenny's here too, you know, yeah. say, because uh, uh, August considered that, that last group that his dream team, you know, yeah. and, uh, but, uh, and we work with the stage manager that worked with August, uh, uh, you know, and, um, and, you know, but there's so much of him here it's, that's left. He's the plays themselves, but there's so many artists, so many people. It's, the family is so large. There's a, it's like there's a company without having a company. You know, that they're, because they're all over. And, Kenny, uh, did, did you direct them all? Yes. All 10? Y yes. The Pittsburgh and Center? we did. Um, Stand up, Kenny, so they can see you. <laughs> and we did all 10 at the Kennedy Center with 42 um, Wilsonian soldiers and seven directors. Wow. That was a beautiful yeah. moment. And one of the things that Denzel participated in last year and some of you guys helped out with was the uh, monologue competition for high school students. <laughs> And you got ninth graders to 12th graders all around the country competing in their cities and then going to New York for a weekend, uh, usually doing August Wilson's birthday. And to see that young generation, that new generation, take these words and make, make them their own is a beautiful thing uh, to behold. I love that this movie opens on Christmas Day because it is such a gift from you all to actors and to audiences. I cannot thank you enough for being here tonight. Thank you guys for being a great audience. Thank you. Thank you so much.